resumes including they them pronouns are more likely to be overlooked new report finds i looked at the report uh, and the science was also overlooked in that report they did not conduct a scientific research at all they just filed two resumes identical one of them had pronouns one of them didn't and they were like oh look the resume uh, without pronouns uh, was more searched than the other one that's not scientific I mean, imagine if you send a resume to a company and they're receiving 10,000 resumes. It could be that your resume was just more likely to be found. It could be that their system, they want to hire women because of diversity reasons. So uh, they, they will have a filter that just filters through the uh, names that are female. There can be plenty of reasons. But uh, I do happen to speak with people that employ in their company. And uh, they did tell me that, yes, uh, there is a list of things that they stay away from. For example, if you happen to graduate from any type of studies, like social studies, gender studies, African-American studies, they're less likely to hire that person. If you have a social media history where you have very colorful hair, that's a red flag. It doesn't mean they won't hire you, but it's a red flag, especially if it's uh, complete unnatural colors like pink or green. Uh, then the pronouns, yes. Uh, if it's they, them, problematic. If it's she, her, and you're transgender, that's not a red flag for many of these companies. So, so why is it? Because I try to figure it out. I asked them. It's like, why do you do this? And what I've been told by several different people that didn't communicate with each other is that it's risk assessment for the company. They believe that these individuals are more likely to cause legal trouble. And I was like, huh, like, what do you mean? Well, for example, if you have a person that comes into the company and starts beef with an older employee, and the older employee has been there for 10 years, and he has been a productive member of the company. But the new guy, he uses uh, social justice ideology in order to report the older employee to the HR. Now the HR has to fire the older employee. Because otherwise, uh, it could be lawsuits for discrimination. So what they're thinking of is like, okay, but what if we don't hire new employees that are so easily upset, that are so easily offended and start starting shit at the company? Then you also have the fact that most of these people are left-leaning in their ideology. They join capitalist corporations, and then they start unionizing, and then they start causing problems. So you may judge whether or not the company is right to do this, but they're basically looking at this as a risk factor. They're not looking at it from an ideological thing. It's like, no, we're a right-wing company. We would never hire people with them. That's not the case. Like, if they would know that the person they're hiring is not going to cause them legal issues and is not going to cause them problems, they would have no problem hiring them. Here's a perfect example, and I mentioned this on a stream previously with a friend of mine called Lucian, and Lucian works at an IT company in the United Kingdom. Now... Once they had a corporate party where everyone gathered, his boss was a little bit drunk. And he confessed to Lucian that the reason he hired him was because on the resume, he read the name Luciana. And he thought that uh, it's a woman. Now, in normal circumstances, that would be the grounds for a lawsuit. Like that is flat out gender discrimination you're basically telling an employee that you wouldn't have hired them if you knew their actual gender. It's kind of like going to a female employee and saying, oh, well, if I knew you were a woman, I wouldn't hire you. Like, that is grounds for a legal lawsuit. However, Lucian, being a straight cisgender white man, where could he have gone? Like, which group in the United Kingdom is actively protecting his characteristics? Is there a mainstream media outlet that would have cared? Is there like a place where he could have gone in order to get help and counseling? The answer is no. So what Lucia did is he changed his gender. Now it's Luciana on paper. In reality, it's Lucia. But now if Luciana gets discriminated, oh, he has all sorts of uh, activist groups that are willing to help her out. So he didn't go with the they them pronouns, but he did change his gender and now if he is in trouble, if he's going to get fired or anything like that, he can always claim that he's be oh, sorry, she's being discriminated. And she can use the power of activist groups and other facilities in order to help her out. And that's how it works, right? This is how the game is played. This is the new meta. 
Uh, because yes, like if you discriminate uh, a woman uh, in the UK, there are many mainstream media outlets willing to hear the case, especially if it's a transgender woman. So my point with this is that the reason this is happening is because it has societal consequences and it does matter. So if you hire like someone with, with has these pronouns in the company, many corporations think that, well, it's a legal liability. Like what if they do a bad job and we need to fire them, but they're going to say that we're firing them because of their pronouns. You see, even if the company wins the lawsuit, it's just like an extra hassle. And on top of that, you have the diversity initiatives, uh, which uh, mostly care about how many women you have in the company. So they will actively go for the she, her pronouns. Uh, they then does not count as a woman, as far as I know. Maybe it does, but like from an ESG standpoint, uh, from what the investors care about, because this is what you have to understand. Corporations do not believe in any of this stuff. Right? Like, they do not believe in diversity. They do not believe in inclusivity. Corporations believe in making money. That's it. Now, if you incentivize them to make more money by being inclusive and diverse, like, basically, you're saying, oh, look, these investors, they care about corporations that are diverse. Or these investors care about inclusivity. Then they will try to be inclusive and diverse in order to attract the investors. But the moment that doesn't happen, the moment the investors are gone, they're, they're just going to go back to the way things were because they aren't convinced of this ideology. They aren't convinced that this is doing the right thing for society. They just believe that is the profitable thing. Because at the end of the day, it's still capitalism. It's not um, a theocracy where people are possessed by an ideological bias. So according to uh, Ashton Jackson, uh, who writes for the publication Make It, she says that inclusivity shouldn't be present, just be present in the workspace. It should be practiced during the hiring process as well. But unfortunately, non-binary job seekers are facing clear biases during their job search. According to a new report from Business.com, a business resource platform, over 80% of non-binary people believe that identifying as non-binary would hurt their job search. Similarly, 51% believe that their gender identity has affected their workplace very or somewhat negatively. See, this is not scientific. You can't just go to a person and ask them, how do you feel about this? And then use their feelings to describe objective reality. Like, for example, I can feel that YouTube is suppressing my channel. But that is not evidence that it does. Maybe I'm just not good enough at being a YouTuber. And because of that, there's other people more talented than me that are worthy of your time. You cannot use like subjective interpretations in order to describe reality. It doesn't work like that. Then they also uh, had this thing with a phantom resume where in one they wrote the pronouns, in the other ones they didn't. And they're like, oh, well, the ones that we didn't write the pronouns uh, got more responses. You need to do that experiment at a larger scale. Like you would have to send at least 5,000 resumes in order to get some accurate readings. And furthermore, if the resumes were identical... Isn't it logical that maybe the person thought, oh, well, this person sent me two resumes and they just throw one of them in the bid and keep the other? Because they might say, well, it may have been a mistake and they just throw one of them. But anyway, right. No, uh, from what I did talk with people who do employment, it, it does seem that there is indeed a bias against non-binary people. And it's also due to the fact that anyone can identify as non-binary, right? Like there is no gated entry. So a lot of companies can also think, Oh, well, he's just trying to sneak his way in. Like, he, he's just going to be a problem maker because he understands uh, how HR works. He understands our inclusivity and our diversity mission statements. Um, and he may be a dishonest actor. Like, he can just be a straight cisgender white man that's trying to benefit from the uh, protection we give to uh, oppressed groups. But he isn't oppressed and he just tries to fake it so that uh, he can use our own systems against us. There are people that are left-leaning who do think like that. Um, so it depends. You, you can't just make this uh, broad statement. But anyway, you know, the, the perfect thing would be uh, if resumes would be anonymous. Like, that would be a solution. But what's interesting is that I read in a lot of these publications that they're against anonymous resumes. I wonder why. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.